Hi, my name is Lembit, and today we're going to go through the sample PKT files for SubAssembly Composer. Uh, these files show the capabilities of SubAssembly Composer, and is a good starting point to get familiar with the software. I'm going to leave uh, the link in the description when, where you can download the package. You can also find this, all the links and information on the Autodesk homepage. So yeah, depending on which year of the software you have, for instance, I have the 2021 subassembly composer, I have downloaded this package right there. Uh, so yeah, to be honest, it doesn't really matter which version of the year you are going to download, they basically are all the same. But yeah, just in, just in case, download the version you have on your computer. So yeah, when you have your zip folder downloaded and, and unpacked, you can start checking out the examples. So yeah, here we are in the sub-assembly composer. You can click on file, open, and navigate to your unpacked uh, folder. When you have reached your unpacked folder, we can start checking out the examples. Let's start with the API functions. So yeah, the API functions is quite simple. We have point one, it just comes from origin. Then we have the auxiliary slopes and links, as you can see, points and links. Uh, as I mentioned before in my previous videos, uh, auxiliary link and auxiliary point, they are not displayed in the uh, CL 3D. So they are just here in the subassembly composer, just helping you out with the different possible outcomes of your custom subassembly. So yeah, keep that in mind. So yeah, uh, then we have the a uh, auxiliary point ten, which uh, also comes from point origin, but it has a type delta x on surface, and surface target is specified by surface. So the point is. When you have a surface which is which has a, a target, then uh, the accelerator point then is displayed. When you don't have a target in um, civil 3D on the surface, I'm going to uncheck this mock here, then it doesn't create anything. Just uh, nothing moves and it also in, in the event viewer, it, sh uh, it displays, shows the error that uh, uh, accelerator point then and the description if the surface target is not specified, which means that, well, when the surface target is not uh, targeted, it won't create anything. Simple as that. But we are going to go back to the surface target. So yeah, the point is, uh, after the point A, uh, auxiliary point 10 is created, we have a decision. Uh, auxiliary point 10, uh, Y, is less than uh, point one y and depending on the circumstances there is a decision created for instance right now it uh, it's shows the cut since the decision the false label is cut there comes the cut and it creates the as you can see two different types of slopes why is that? Well, after this decision is uh, done, uh, after cut, there's a, another decision. Uh, point one, distance to surface. Uh, the surface right here means this surface type. For instance, if you had something else, like, uh, I'm not going to type right here, but any, any other name, you can use this right here also. Well, the point is that uh, if the distance to surface is uh, greater than minus two, it's going to create uh, this uh, this point and link from uh, point one with the slope uh, two hundred. As you can see, we have a preview value of two, uh, and it creates that link right there. But for instance, if if you're going to cre uh, write right here one point ninety nine. Up 1.99, then it's going to create this one right here. 
with the slope 100%. So that's the point of the decision. Simple as that. Sh shallow cut or deep cut. And after that, it creates uh, another point, point three, and another link, and that's it. Simple as that. And if you're going to get the uh, fill, it has the same decision. P1, distance to surface, is greater than 2. And it creates the same thing. If it's greater than 2, it's going to get that high fill or the low fill. So based on the decisions, it creates the points of links. As simple as that. And just keep in mind that uh, on both sides of the decision, you can have the points and links with the same names. It's extremely useful, like in this situation, because, well, as you can see, we have four point and links with the same name. If they all were uh, different with the different names and links, then uh, the P3, then we had, had uh, three, four different uh, points after this decision is made, right? But as everything is with the one name and with the one link, we have this point three with com with com which comes from point one. And so yeah, keep that in mind that you can have same names, uh, same, same link names and the codes uh, on the both sides of the decision. So yeah, let's check out the next one. Next one is uh, auxiliary intersection. That's a quick example as well. Just a one point, point two from point one, nothing special. And then we have the auxiliary point one. It It's also slope to surface. It comes from origin. It just has the slope and the surface. If the sur we don't have a surface, then it doesn't create anything and shows you an error as well. So yeah, then we have this one and auxiliary point two. Well, as you can see, it creates the auxiliary point two. That's the point of this example that we have auxiliary point with the intersection. So there are three types of intersections. In this example, it uses the link, point and slope. You need three of these components to create this intersection. So basically we have a link, which is link one right here. Then we have a point, uh, which is auxiliary point one. And then we have a slope, which, which slope we want to have. It's at 20% uh, and it creates this point right here. So link, auxiliary point and slope from the point, which is 20% and it creates intersection on this link. Simple as that. For instance, if you put the surface higher, it won't create uh, the intersection because it's outside of the link, the physical link. But uh, there is a possible workaround. You can just click on extend link. So it extends the link. But it doesn't matter if you don't have the link right here. It just extends it and you have the point. Well, Depending on the situation, it's, it can be very useful. Sometimes you just don't need that. But yeah, keep that in mind. So yeah, next example. Well, there's a auxiliary link. Also another point, another point two from the point one. Then we have point three from point one, nothing special. Then we have the auxiliary link one, which comes from between these two points. And we have the curve, uh, bit, uh, I mean arc between these, um, these points. So yeah, you can choose which link, second link, how frequently it's going to build the arc. For instance, if I put two, it's going to create this thing right here. So yeah, you can run by radius or a length, depending on what you need, you can choose. So yeah, nothing special. Something like that can be used to create, for instance, some 
I don't know, pipes or anything that needs to arc. So yeah. Let's check out the next example. Uh, there's an auxiliary, <laughs> auxiliary surface link uh, as well. There's just the point one from the origin. And then we have the, uh, what it's called, it's a, uh, yeah, the surface link. So once again, everything moves around the surface. If the surface is not uh, targeted, it won't create anything. So yeah, depending on your situation, useful, very useful functionality to have. Yeah, next one. The mark point is not needed right now. Actually, a point. It's easy. So, yep, curve example. Here is a curve example. Yeah. I I'm not using curves m that much because well, for instance, the pipes and everything else can be done in Civil Three by other tools. But here you have uh, three different options. Basically, you can have orc general uh, three points or a parabola. So nothing special. Point one, point two, point three, and we're gonna have the orc between uh, by by using three points. So yeah, nothing special. The arc three points as well. It's almost the same thing. And parabola. Nothing, nothing hard, nothing special, but it's a great, great to have. N you never know when you're gonna need that one. There's a daylight rounding example. I'm not, I have never met something, uh, any projects that we have, we need daylight rounding. But uh, well, nevertheless, there is a such function. Point one, point two. There is a, there is your daylight target from the point three. So surface target and then we have the daylight rounding with the daylight rounding you can also select the round option or, or parabolic and as well you can just round by radius or length so yeah as well simple as that if you need it use it if you don't just keep in mind that you have this function yeah well there are there is a decision cut or fill. In the API functions, we saw the decision uh, example already. But here we go once again. There is your decision. Depending is it false or true, it's going to create these points or links, or these points or and links. So yeah, simple as that. And if you don't have a surface target, it won't create anything. Well, it will create everything that was done before the decision. So yeah, simple. What's what's we have? There is a yes or no decision. This one is uh, also nice to have. So basically, uh, in input output parameters, you can have uh, well a name. And it has a uh, type, yes or no. When you choose in your civil 3D, no. The condition is that draw shape equals yes. Right now we have no. It doesn't draw the shape inside this, this uh, rectangle. When you have uh, in your civil 3D, you click the default value on yes, then it's just draw the shape equals yes, it's true, yep, and it's going to draw you the shape. Simple as that, so you can use it uh, on anything that you want, for, ex for example, I don't know, would you like to have a slope or yes, no, and, and so on, so yeah, you can experiment with that, quite useful. Let's keep on moving. Uh, there's a cut, decision cut or few range, yes or no. Well, this one, okay, we have solved this one already. Yeah, but define variables. We can check out this one. 